Welcome back to a new review, ladies and gentlemen. This time we are finally wrapping up the Jack and Daxter Marathon with Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier. This review actually came out quicker than I had anticipated. I thought the game would take a long ass time to finish, but here we are. With The Lost Frontier, I actually did find something substantial about the game's development. The year is 2009, and Naughty Dog wants to make another Jack game, and this is coming off of the success of their first PS3 game, Uncharted Drake's Fortune. And so they also wanted to make a sequel to Uncharted, and quickly Uncharted 2 Among Thieves became the focus of the company. And so the new Jack game was outsourced to High Impact Games, a group of ex-Naughty Dog and Insomniac Games employees. They previously made Ratchet and Clank Size Matters for the PSP, and later ported it to the PS2. They had also made Secret Agent Clank for the PSP. So instead of the new Jack game being on the PS3, we got on the PSP, with the intentions of this game being the reason to buy a PSP Go, which was dropped before I even had the chance to find out what it even was. But anyway, The Lost Frontier also saw release on the PS2, and that's the version that we'll be reviewing in this video. Since I don't have the PSP version, and this version has full camera control, widescreen, and 480p. I first played this game when it came out. I tried to love it, but I'll be honest, I was horrified. The game was, in my opinion at the time, one of the worst games I had played, with frequent game file corruption. I couldn't beat this game until 2013, and on that day, I declared I would never play this game again until a review. So three years later, does the game meet my expectations of poor quality? Let's start with the story. Jack the Lost Frontier was initially supposed to be the follow-up to Jack X. But since then, the game has basically been wiped clean of the canon. While some people out there will still tell you that the game is canon, even more so than Jack X and Daxter, but I'll tell you where I stand, and that would easily be the non-canon side. Anyway, Jack, Daxter, and Kira, who looks nothing like Kira, are traveling in a plane because apparently the world is running out of eco. Remember back in my review of the Precursor Legacy where I had mentioned how eco was what every natural thing on the planet was made of? Yes? Well, I only said that just so I could reference that fact right now. How could you run out of eco? That's like saying we run out of atoms or something. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. They then run into... Sky Pirates. Whatever the fuck that means. Led by Phoenix, and he and Jack start fighting only for Daxter to shoot the plane out of the sky. Dax, get on the gun. Aye, aye, sir! Right then and there, a major bomb is dropped. We've run out of world! Yes. According to the developers of this game, the Precursors, gods who built the entire universe, just forgot to finish. The Precursors built the world. Well, they didn't quite finish. And the edge of the world really, literally looks like somebody took a bite out of it. And nobody knew until now. Great fucking game. So Jack finds Green Eco to fix the plane. Jackie boy, I do believe we just hit Paydirt. So then we find the pirates attacking the Europan people, so we fight them off and join the Europans, led by Duke Skyheed. And that's where we find the Eco Seeker, which they give us. Not that anybody should really care, but skip to this point in the video to avoid spoilers. But I'll say, you'll be missing out on a gold mine of comedy. The pirates take the Eco Seeker and Kira gets kidnapped along with it. Jack follows them and then crash lands yet again and meets some old dude. We go to the pirates and all of a sudden the pirates and Kira are best friends and the funniest scene ever ensues. Suddenly, we now have a love triangle between Jack, Phoenix, and Kira. Even though Phoenix is a new character who has had like two and a half minutes of screen time, and meanwhile, Jack has stopped Golan Mai from destroying the world with Dark Eco, stopped the entire invasion from killing the whole human race, and saved the entire planet from mass annihilation, and when the whole team was poisoned, Jack got the cure back for everybody. So just saying, I have a hard time caring about this drama. Daxter falls into the sewers and gets touched by Dark Eco. <laughs> What the fuck? Dark Daxter? Really? In Jack 3, the precursors touched by Dark Eco were the Dark Makers, and Daxter is technically a precursor because he was turned into an Otzel, and those are the precursors. So he should be a Dark Maker, not this abomination. Just figured I'd mention this because the game barely does. And I forgot it even happened until we're forced to play this shit. Anyway, from this point on, I have no clue what's going on anymore. I mean, the characters are all talking about stopping the Eco Crisis, but it's all in one ear and out the other for me. Until we find the Eco Core, and apparently Duke Skyheat is bad, and experiments on people with Dark Eco. Cool, I guess. This dude was helping us the whole time. Phoenix sacrificed himself by saying every cliche line in the book. Besides, if I don't show you up, who will? I started this, and I damn well can finish it. Jack, it was great flying with you. 
Keep Kira safe, will you? With Jack finishing off Sky Heat, ending the Lost Frontier with the ugliest kissing animation I've ever seen. Hey, wait a minute. I thought she liked Phoenix. The story is pretty up there as one of my worst aspects of this game. It makes no sense. It's very contradictory to the rest of the series, and it's just a crappy narrative overall. The audio quality is also pretty weak. I mean, every character sounds like it belongs in a PSP game, which it was. That's very inexcusable in my opinion that they didn't fix that. Impressive flying, friend. I am Duke Skyheat, leader of the Europan people and protector of the sacred eco. I'm Kira, and this is Jack. Why didn't you tell me Ashlyn was Praxis's daughter? What's your connection with her? That's none of your business. The voice acting itself is also decent enough. Jack is now voiced by Josh Keaton, and I know he can act because of his performance as Spider-Man in the Spectacular Spider-Man series in Revolver Ocelot and Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater and Portable Ops. He's not the best fit for Jack, but I grew used to him and thought he was pretty good overall. But Daxter, he is by far the worst character in the game. He's so annoying and constantly repeating his lines, and I know Daxter could be kind of annoying before, but here, his lines are trying so hard to be funny, but it's just not funny. Graphically, this game looks pretty mediocre, even in progressive scan. I'm not impressed, honestly. I know it was a PSP game, but instead of making distinct colorful environments to compensate, the game is just ugly to look at. The music is almost non-existent, I mean, it's so forgettable. I said that about Jack 1, 2, and Daxter, but this game is by far the worst example of this. Most of the time, it's just you walking with the only sounds being Jack's feet touching the ground. That even goes for the climactic final boss battle. In terms of gameplay, Jack and Daxter the Lost Frontier looks like everything checks out. I mean, Jack has all his moves from the previous games, except the high and long jump, which means this slow ass jog is Jack's top speed, which isn't even the biggest problem, it's the combat. Forget Daxter, this game is by far some of the most awkward combat I've ever experienced in a game. Jack has knockback in this game every time he gets hit. And other than that, I have a really hard time describing what makes the combat so bad, but it's really something you have to play for yourself to truly understand. The Lost Frontier is one of those games where it looks okay enough, but playing it is a whole nother story. What's even worse is the platforming. I said it about Precursor Legacy, and I said it was worse at Daxter, and it's the worst it's ever been in this game. And again, I don't even know how to describe it, it's just shit! Mm. Ugh. Fuck! Shit! And of course, this mission had to be timed. The mission structure is the same from Jack 2 and Jack 3, but most of the missions are incredibly annoying, with annoying time limits, irritating controls, and combat. This game gives Jack new eco powers. Green eco summons crystals and the most awkward shield in all existence. Red eco fires a projectile that you shoot to cause an explosion. Yellow eco allows you to do a high jump. Blue eco slows down time and teleports you around. Which barely functions, I might add, especially in combination with the shield. The morph gun is also back with the scatter gun, which is next to useless in this game. The blaster has been greatly nerfed due to having next to no rapid fire potential, and instead making the Vulcan Fury the go-to weapon. But this is just a tease, since it does shit for damage on bosses. Instead of the Peacemaker, we got a bomb weapon called the Lobber. Got nothing, honestly. Defeated enemies drop Dark Eco, and we transform into Dark Jack. <laughs> Or not, we use it to buy upgrades, and trust me, get the health upgrades above all else. You're going to need it for these atrocious boss battles. They all suck with repetitive patterns and way too much damage done on you. But the standout bosses are this abomination and the plain battle with Skyheed. The abomination is frustrating due to how unclear it is to beat and how you die in like two hits. And there's only one ammo and health drop, and you can barely hurt him. And it goes on for two phases with no checkpoints. But Skyheed is by far the worst part of the whole damn game. I spent 30 minutes on this pile of ass. The top corner and characters are saying, kill Sky Heed, and I'm trying as hard as I can to blow his ass out of the sky, but for some reason, none of my weapons are doing shit to him. Yes, there are five planes in this game and you can buy parts for them, but the game never prioritizes that you do it. So I brought one or two upgrades, since for the first four hours of game time, planes are just methods of traveling, but the last hour and a half really shoves the dogfighting down your throat. And if you pick a fast plane and not a powerful one to get from place to place, and they're suddenly thrown into a dogfighting mission that the game never told you would be happening, you're fucked. And you've got to do it with a weaker plane, you can't switch. And these sections go on forever. And the biggest problem I have is that the game wants you to care about Phoenix and his pirate crew, but fuck that. Apparently they have a million planes to fight me in the beginning when I'm not on their side. But when I'm on their side, and the ship is being attacked, fuck that, it's just me out there, trying to defend everyone and myself, all the while trying to destroy the target, and it's infuriating. 
I mean, the final boss would have had more impact if it was me and my team of pirates taking on the enemy fleet. But no, they all sit on their asses and watch. I don't know, maybe I've been playing too much Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, where you can literally stand there as Raiden and Snake will do 90% of the work. But that's a lot more realistic than this shite. Anyway, back to Sky He. You've got a million enemy drones firing at me. Death traps everywhere. Even though it was a precursor establishment, and I thought the precursors like Jack or something. So why is the security focusing on me and not the guy breaking in? And after a half hour of not doing shit to this guy, the mission just abruptly ends. Like, what the fuck? I didn't almost have to die a tenth time trying to kill him, when the whole time I didn't even have to do shit other than chase him? Fucking bullshit. I've had issues with the other games in the series, but nothing like this. I mean, I could tell you how the planes control and how it's really boring and slow, but who really gives a rat's ass, honestly? The only other thing to complain about would be Dark Daxter and how boring and mind-numbing this atrocious gameplay is. But I think the footage speaks for itself. Sonic the Werehog was more fun. The story doesn't offer any kind of justification for this, and I guess by collecting precursor orbs we can give Dark Daxter a football helmet, and Jack a beard for that matter. But other than that, the game has New Game Plus, and also the game has side quests you can do, but no thanks, honestly. In the end, I'll say Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier was not as bad as I was expecting. I mean, I was going into this expecting to play one of the worst games of all time. I mean, 2013 it was certainly up there, but since then I've played a lot more games and tastes have changed. Is Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier good? Fuck no. With game design this bad, fucking please. But while I was playing the platforming levels, there was plenty of frustration but I can appreciate the fact that this game has effort put into it. I mean, back in my Sly 2 review, I said passion was something I appreciated in a game. I can tell there was passion put into this game, but no polish, making the final product complete ass. By far the worst Jack game. And if you don't believe me, take a look at the damage this game did to the series. The game came out to mixed reception, but it was quickly forgotten about. I mean, high impact games went on to make such classics as Phineas and Ferb, Disney Princess, and some of them went on to make Sonic boom the rise of Lyric on Wii U, which was more or less the same crap as this game. And since this game, Jack and Daxter have not had a game. I mean, Jack and Daxter is a franchise I grew up with, but I'd be lying if I said the future was looking bright for Jack and Daxter. I mean, they appeared in the crap game PlayStation Move Heroes, which would have been cool if it weren't for the fact that the game was a PS Move tech demo. And Sony Smash Bros, which while not being bad, was quickly forgotten about like The Lost Frontier. Ratchet and Clank is still alive and well, and unfortunately so is Sly Cooper, but Jack is dead in the water with the cancelled Jack 4 by Naughty Dog really sealing in the deal. So while I enjoyed looking back at the Jack series, I'm definitely Jack and Daxtered out, so to speak. I hope this series gets revived one day. With Naughty Dog's higher focus on more realistic games, I can't say I see that happening in the near future.